hello and welcome to our channel if you haven't already make sure you subscribe like this video leave a nice comment and share it with some friends it may not seem like much but it really helps us out today we're going to be talking about raising goats in a free range herd setting so a lot of the time when it comes to the idea of free ranging goats uh, a lot of people are put off by it and when it comes to the notion of raising goats in a herd setting it's almost like people view this as a goat raising sin. However, in this video, I'm going to be going over the pros and cons to both free ranging your goats and allowing your goats to move together as a herd. I'm also going to be talking about how we managed to make this work, what kind of effects it has had on our goats' lives and our lives, and a few tips and tricks for anyone thinking about free-ranging their goats and or herd raising their goats. So the first thing you're going to want to consider when you're thinking about doing this is safety. Safety is the utmost important thing. You want your goats to be 100% safe from the elements, from predators, from disease, from injury, uh, poisonous plants, anything like that. You want them to be safe. So there are a few safety concerns you need to think about with your property and your current setup. Uh, how close is your home to a road? How much land do you have? What kind of environment do you live in? Are your animals going to be protected? Such as having forests or shelters set up on your land for your animals to seek cover from the elements? Do you live somewhere with rocky cliffs and hills where your goat could fall and break a leg? Do you live in the desert where it's scorching heat all the time? These are things you need to consider. You might even need to consider whether or not you have poisonous plants growing on your property. All of these things need to be taken into consideration. Another thing you should also consider is predators. How are your goats going to be protected from predators at peak hunting hours like dawn, dusk, in the, in the middle of the night? As for our goats, we live on the grassy plains, so we don't have much of a fall concern or a broken leg concern in terms of tripping on rocks or falling off cliffs and hills or getting stuck in crevices in the ground. We don't have that big of an issue. As for poisonous plants, before free-ranging our goats, we swept every inch of our property to make sure there were no poisonous plants. That includes hemlock, nightshade, any of your other more standard poisons, but you should also do plenty of research on what kinds of plants are toxic to goats. Become familiar with these plants to where you can identify them on the spot and make sure your property has none of that. As for predators, at night, our goats come to sleep up on our front porch right next to the front door. They are trained for this every single night. They must bed down on our front porch, on the opposite wall from where our bedrooms are and where our dogs are. So in case anything happens in the middle of the night with predators, we have our dogs to protect them, and we protect them. Our goats do not bed down anywhere else except for right there, next to the front door. As for babies, babies are a huge concern for us. Babies are so small and vulnerable and lightweight that they can easily be snatched by a predator. All they have to do is snatch them and run with them, and they're gone. So, as for our babies and our mothers who are nursing babies, they go up in a stall at night to be let out first thing at dawn. At dusk, when all the goats start to bed down, we move them, the mothers and the babies, to their stalls. And in the morning, when it's time for them to graze, we turn them loose. Now, this is only when we have babies. When there are no babies, the mothers are out with the bugs grazing at all times. They are not stalled. So that's something else you have to consider. How big of a risk are predators to your goats? Do you have mountain lions that you can hear screaming every night? Coyotes you see walking across your property? These are things you need to consider. Disease is something else you should also consider. Do any of your neighbors have other goats or sheep or any other animal 
that can pass diseases onto your goats. When you free range your goats, there is a big chance that if your neighbors have other goats, your goats will walk right up to their fence and interact with these animals. Disease is something you have to consider. Vaccinations, deworming, these are all necessary preventative measures for your goats contracting diseases. Another thing you have to consider is exposure to the elements. How are your goats going to be protected from extreme heat, extreme cold, rain, wind, sleet, tornadoes, hurricanes, earthquakes, wildfires, whatever elements you have in your location, how are your goats going to be protected? For us, we have several shelters all around our property where our goats can freely walk under these shelters or get into these shelters to protect themselves from these elements. Busy roads are another big concern with free-ranging goats. If you live near busy highways, if your property is very close to a concerning major road, you need to consider the factor of how will you keep your goats, although free-ranged, off the highway? Whether that be implementing a gate on your driveway, whether that be reconsidering what area of your property, like for instance the back half of your property that your goats are allowed to free-range on, now, part of free-ranging is having no fences. That, that is, at least in our opinion, the definition of free-range. I do not see how an animal can be free-ranged if it is in a cage or a fence or a pen. That kind of defeats the purpose of the name. I'm going to clarify, probably a little too late in this video, but I'm going to clarify, when we say free-range, we do not mean pasture-ranged we mean no fences. So we do not even have a gate at our driveway. We have no fences around our entire property except for one little dog run that we allow our dogs to just go play. Now we managed to train our goats not to leave our property whatsoever. They understand the boundaries of our property. They understand that the world outside of our property lines is a dangerous, scary place. There are coyotes out there. There are stray dogs out there. There are speeding cars, dirt bikes, gunshots, all kinds of crazy, scary things to a goat. Now, the first day we let our goats out for free ranging, I was sure they were going to take off and never come back. I was terrified. But as soon as we opened those gates and we said, be free, they stayed, and we've never once had an incident of any of our goats wandering away. None of our goats have ever walked down the driveway. None of our goats have ever left our property. We've never had an incident like this, and I will tell you exactly how we did that. So the first step to achieving this was making sure our goats felt safe and comfortable and well cared for. We wanted them to feel that this home was truly their home and that this home is the only place that they can find safety, food, water, grooming, everything a goat needs and desires. We made sure they found it here and only here in our home. We established for them a territory. As for any concerns of our goats wandering too far away from our property, or wandering off of our property at all. The solution to this, we were worried about this in the beginning. We thought the minute we let our goats out of those fences and out of those pens, they would take off down the driveway, take off down the road, and be gone forever. Or that we'd turn our back for 10 seconds and they would just be gone forever in the woods. But that didn't happen. It was quite the opposite, actually. The second step we took to ensure that our goats did not wander past our property was bonding. First was training, then was bonding. We established ourselves in these goats' herd. We are, to them, in their eyes, as much a member of their herd as they are. 
Now, th this may seem ridiculous, but we raised all of these goats by hand in our home, outside of our home. My roommate and I both work from home. We are constantly, constantly around these goats. At all hours of the day, we are there with them. And it has been like this since they were babies. Now, our goats do not suffer any separation anxiety from us because they have each other. We go inside for a bit. They don't scream. However, they do not leave us behind anywhere. They are happy to see us every day, is basically what I'm saying. They are happy to see us. They enjoy all of the love and attention and affection we give them. They are bonded to us. So, the bonding and the training combined is how we got our goats to stay away from those roads, stay on our property, and it's, it's basically how we avoided releasing an entire herd of goats just to lose them. No, I'm not saying this is a guaranteed method. If you have any concern in your mind that you will not be able to pull this off like we did, then by all means, establish a fence perimeter around your property lines. I'm not saying to pen your goats up. This is still a free-range discussion. However, if you're worried about losing your goats to being run over or just in general them wandering away and never returning, then fencing at your property lines and a gate on your driveway is a great way to prevent that. However, if you can pull this off like we did, uh, maybe I can make a more detailed training video on this. Let me know in the comments. But if you are confident in your abilities to keep your goats from running away forever, by all means, no fencing necessary. And it's a great thing. So another thing you have to consider is practicality. Is free-ranging your goats going to stress you and your family out to no belief? If so, then it's probably not for you. Um, if free-ranging your goats is going to help you gain some more comfort and rest and peace on your homestead, then go for it. You have to consider things like, if you have a garden, is it protected from the goats? Do you have fencing around your garden, or do you have a greenhouse? These goats will do anything in their power once they are free-ranged to get to your garden. You also have to consider things like, are you okay with your goats walking up to your car, seeing their reflection, and headbutting your car? Because the same thing happened to me. Personally, I was okay with it. You have to consider possibilities, like your goats will probably come onto your front porch and poop all over the place, and you'll have to sweep goat poop off your front porch every day. That is our reality, but we are okay with it. Practicality is a big consideration when you're thinking about free-ranging your goats. There are other concerns you might have when you're thinking about free-ranging your goats. You may be thinking about, yeah, well, what if my neighbors don't like it? Or what if the city I live in doesn't allow this? Or what if this? What if that? There are a bunch of considerations you have to take into play. There is not a one-answer-fits-all your situation on your homestead or your farm may be different from our situation. You need to sit down with your family and think about all the aspects that you have concerns on, discuss it, and come to a decision on whether or not it's the best fit for you and your setup as an individual. So let's talk about some do's and don'ts when it comes to free-ranging your goats. Do keep a lot of fresh water available at all times to your goats on multiple areas of your property. Do not assume that all goats will automatically know how to find water sources, especially if you have a fast-flowing or a deep creek on your property that they could possibly drown in. Try to offer water on the opposite side so that there's no chance of them desperately looking for water on that creek and drowning. Do offer free choice hay to your goats 
on multiple areas if you like too. However, we prefer to keep our hay in one central location so they always know where it is when they want it. Do keep out multiple sources of mineral, whether you choose to use the loose mineral kind or the mineral block. Don't automatically assume that all goats will have these built-in survival instincts that wild goats have. Not all goats are the same. Some goats will pick up survival instincts very quickly and other goats will be entirely dependent on you. Don't assume that you can just put your goats out there wild and free and never have to pay attention to them, never have to feed them or clip the hooves or groom them or take care of them or check on them every day. Never assume that. Just because they're free range does not mean you do not have responsibilities over them. Do adequate research on goat herds and goat social structures. It's actually really interesting to learn how they move as a herd, how the lead female directs them, how the lead buck brings up the rear. It's a very interesting subject to learn about goat herds and their social structures. And it's also, when you're, th when you're free-ranging your goats, it's, it's a good idea to research these things. I can talk about that more in depth in another video. So let's briefly touch on keeping bucks with does year-round, aka what we like to call herd raising, on top of free-ranging. I plan on getting into more depth of this in another video entirely of its own, but let's just do a brief touch-up here. So just like with free-ranging, all of the things we had to consider here for free-ranging our goats, consider them when you're keeping bucks with does. Consider the safety, consider the practicality, consider any concerns that you have as an individual for your own individual circumstances. Again, your circumstances may be different from our circumstances. So a huge benefit as to why we prefer raising our bucks with our does year round and never separate them is 100% for their social structure and their happiness. They are a bonded herd, bucks and does alike. They have respect for each other. They are all bonded to each other. If we were to separate our bucks from our does, they would freak out. Now, I do not recommend keeping your bucks with your does year round if they are confined in pastures or fences or pens or what have you. With our goats being free ranged, the does have ample space to walk away from the bucks, get away from the bucks if they're being too pushy. Each goat has plenty of space. And in this instance, free ranging has ensured that our goats do not fight, they do not bicker, the males do not constantly pressure and pester the females to breed, they stay in season. Our bucks do not show interest in our females until our females are in season, in breeding season in the fall. In which case, the females decide when they want to breed, and they will accept the male. We don't have any bullying going on. We don't have the bucks fighting each other. The bucks are very gentle with the babies, and they are a big, happy family. We have Caridwin, our lead doe, who leads the herd, and we have Mordred our lead buck who brings up the rear when the herd is moving. We are very happy with this system, and it's very clear that our goats are very happy with this system. And in using this system, our bucks and our does have actually broken the stigma that bucks and does cannot be allowed to range or be housed together. And surprisingly, we never have unplanned breedings. We also never have incidents of injuries that they inflict on themselves or each other with their horns. Their horns cannot be cut, caught up in fences because there are no fences. They don't hurt each other with their horns because of their extremely complicated and beautifully sound social structure in the herd. Again, I'll talk more about their herd structure in another video entirely along with more reasons why we raise our bucks with our does year-round. 
So since implementing this free range and herd raising system, we've noticed a multitude of benefits for ourselves and our goats. We've noticed in the year that we've been practicing this system, our goats are healthier, stronger, and much, much, much happier. And we've also noticed that a lot of stress uh, that comes along with raising goats and goat care has been taken off of us. So we can actually sit back now and enjoy watching our goats live holistically and the way nature intended. Without all the stress and mayhem that comes with raising goats, since implementing this system, we've also never had an incident of bloat. So we really prefer this holistic way to raise goats naturally. It's better for them, and it's better for us, for everyone's happiness, at least in our experience. So that's all for today, but I will be posting more about this in another video. I'll be posting all kinds of other videos soon.